Hey everyone, welcome to part one of the Kalata Commemorative Tour. I started at McCarran Airport, and if you have the chance and you're passing through, be sure to check out this Hacienda airplane. It actually stayed in the air for 64 days without landing and set a world record. There's also this really cool aeronautical museum. Time to take off, everybody. Shortly after landing, I met up with my friends, Art and Michael. <laughs> so, so I didn't think that I could be a sardine. <laughs> here we are. Well, here we are. In Chicago. We made it. Hey, get your hand off my knee. Get your hand off my knee. You big pervert. I thought we were in Frisco. You big pervert. I thought we were in Frisco. Sorry. <laughs> We wasted absolutely no time and headed straight to Richard's Bar the first night. I just got money. Yeah, my money. Sacred money. <laughs> Let's go. Into Richard's. Richard's Bar. Richard's Bar was a pretty cool place to hang out. Of course, we met some interesting characters. Funny like how? Like I'm a clown? Like I'm here to fucking amuse you? No, no, you said it. You said it. First stop, Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> We're gonna have coffee with Colada. The other Colada. First, I'm gonna, here's, here, the church is across the street here on the left, where they robbed the church. Okay, they this robbed the church. Not the church, the brink struck. 
They robbed the Brinks truck and they pushed the priest into the rectory. This is the cemetery. And they tied up the priest. And the priest kept saying, Gotta forgive you. And Frank said, I know, I don't want to hear that shit though. Really? <laughs> that was yeah. the cemetery that they were at. Okay. This was the church right here. This is the church? Yeah, Divine Savior. This is, uh, <laughs> not proud of it, but this is what he did. Okay. Divine Savior. Unbelievable. I guess they had a, a guy across the street with a gun. And then they were watching, and the two guys went in, I guess, and they were dressed, one was dressed as a priest, and then the other guy was dressed as a, a Brinks truck driver. Okay. And they went in here, and then they robbed the Brinks truck. You know the rest of the story. My brother told the whole story. Do you want another one of the biggest scars I went on with penis? Yeah, please. We pulled a, a, a Brinks truck robbery in Norwich. I believe it was Norwich. The last truck stop of the day, the truck went to a rectory where the priests live, and they would pick up, the, I guess, the weekly receipts that they took in from the, the church. So Penis followed it and laid on it. And the only reason why he filled me in on the scar is because I didn't live too far from there. I live in the Frank, Franklin Park. And when you pull a robbery like that, you got to get out of the area real quick. So he filled me in. I guess they needed me, and that's the only reason why, for the drop. So uh, if he told me about it. He said he had a money truck. And I thought, what, what do you mean a money truck? He said, Brinks truck. He said, are you in for it? You know, you live over here. Said, yeah, yeah, said, I'll do it. How much is there? He said, half a million. That's a lot of money in cash. No jewelry. You know you're going to get a half a million. He says, uh, here's how we do it. And we listen. He said, we're going to have two cars. He says, Jerry's going to be in one. He's going to be sitting in there with a high-powered rifle. Because if the guy in the Brinks truck wouldn't open up the door, he was going to shoot him with this high-power window uh, rifle, which would have went right through that window, the bullets. Uh, I forgot what kind of uh, bullets they were using that day. A long time ago. And uh, there was going to be three of us that were going to go into rectory. And of course, Paul Pamsko, Penis, he was going to be outside. And uh, we went into the rectory. It was Joe D'Argeno, Mike Joyce, and myself, and Frank DeLegge. Uh, we didn't all run at the door at the same time. So we went up to the door. This was late at night. It was the last stop of the day. Knocked on the door. The driver looked over. He seen the hat. In other words, let me put it like this. When the driver got out of the truck, he went to the, he went to the door, the rectory. He knocked on the door. The guy opened up the slot, the priest. The priest seen the hat. He opened up the door. He let the guard in. As soon as the guard came in, we jumped on him, okay? We tied him up. We put the priest down with him. Mike LaJoy put the guard's hat on his head. He went out to the truck with a bag, looking like there was money in it, over his shoulder. He walked to the window of the truck. He was a short guy like the driver. He tapped on the window with his fist like this, bing, bing, bing. The guard looked over. Reached over. It was a two-man truck, as I said. It was open through. Opened up the door. When he opened up the door, Mike presented his pistol. The guy put his hands up. Jerry Thomas, like he didn't know the guy had the rifle on him. He got in the truck, tied the guy up. Another guy jumped in the truck when a Frank the leg. Well, we, well, we got to uh, move the truck. One guy, I stood back there with, with the three priests while they were tied on the floor. And the one priest looked up at me. He didn't actually look up. He says, son, God will forgive you. You can walk away. We see nothing. He forgives you, son. I said, thank you, father. I said, I don't want to hear it. What can I tell this guy? I said, you'll be fine. So they moved the car, and there's a cemetery attached to this rectory. So they moved the Brinks truck into the cemetery. And that's when peanuts rolled up with the other work car, and they start taking all the money out. Now, we had the back seat out of that car. It was a Ford. And they loaded the trunk and the back, back seat, all loaded, with bags of money from the truck. They didn't know if they were getting bags of checks, bags of cash, or what. But anyway, they were all pretty well stuffed. Then uh, tied that, let that truck in there with the guy tied up in there. Proceeded with that truck, with peanuts following it, with the money car, to my house. And we had another car there, as I said, uh, Jerry Thomasek. Went to my house, drove it in the garage. 
Everybody went down in my basement, got everything ready. Peanuts didn't come in the house for a while. Joe D'Argeno said, where's Peanuts? I see he's still in the garage. He says he's watching the money. He's fucked that. He's that guy who'll steal a bag of money. I said, what do we steal one of them for if you got to worry about them? He said, you got to watch everybody, Frankie. I don't know about Peanuts. So he went outside and he brought Peanuts in. And uh, then I went outside and checked all around the garage. He didn't take anything. And then we started to count the money. And uh, it took it took a lot of hours. I'd say it took maybe six, seven hours. Now I was in the we were in the basement. My mother had no idea what was going on down there. My kid brother was too young. I think I don't know, maybe sixteen. And uh, all the change we threw in a trash can, not a big one, a trash can about that big. Who wanted the change? I wind up giving the change to my brother, kid, you know, but all this loose change, he put it in piggy banks and sold it through the week to the banks. We counted the money, come out to 300, 366,000, close to it. Now, nobody wanted to take the money home with him. I had a stash, I had a hidden wall in my, in my basement, specially made, not for this robbery. So even the cops couldn't detect it. You could detect when there's a hollow wall. We had this, I had this done correctly. And we put the bags, shopping bags of money in there. And there were shopping bags. But then there was two extra bags. And I said, what's these two extra bags for? He says, uh, Snuffy and Buffy. I said, who the fuck is Snuffy and Buffy? He says, two guys. They work for the South Side guys. He says, uh, Woody Potatoes and them. They get 20%. I shook my head. Here we go again. 20%. So that two shopping bags for each one of their bosses. They left their money. Snuffy and Buffy, whatever. I swear to God, I don't remember their names. That's the names they used. They, they picked up uh, the bags the following day, I believe it was. And he's out there. Why do we didn't take the bags out of there? Well, you know, the neighbor was swamped with police after that robbery. It was a big robbery. Brinks truck, the priest. So the next day they took it out of there. And... Uh, Within three, four days, they all went down, come by me and picked up a bag a day till they all had their money. And uh, nobody got arrested or uh, it went smooth. About, I think it was maybe six years later, I'm not quite sure. One of the guys, two, actually three of the guys ran a robbery and a serious story, they were taking the money and one of the employees went to fight with one of them and he shot him. And I think they killed him. They didn't want to. And uh, he got fingered. And I'm not sure if it was Doge, Joe Giargeno or Mike LeJoy. It was a long time ago. They rolled. They didn't want to get charged with murder. And the cops made a deal with him, and they give up the Brinks truck and everybody else. I did go to court on that uh, because I had three other charges pending at the time. So I copped out like everybody else. What, what was they going to give me? I cop out, you get less time. So I got six years with that. And uh, I don't know what happened to the other one. A couple of the guys went to the witness protection program. Uh, I don't know. Peanuts got a little time. Everybody got a little time. And that's the end of that score with Peanuts. I did do another one with them, but they were grabbing people to ca check cashing places. You know, you get your check and the company puts a guy there to cash them for you and he gives you some cash. So we used to grab down penis and scars. Those are desperation robberies. And then a jewel crash. We crashed the jewels, jewelry store downtown off of Wabash Street. The window, that was crazy. That was insanity. Drove on a sidewalk with the car. I don't know, and I said, this guy's a, he's like, a, he's a wild man. You know, that's what I said. So I stopped stealing one. Then they drove to Franklin Park where we lived at and they dropped the money off there. That was uh, Mike LaJoy, Joe D'Argeno. They're all dead now, so I could say their names. I wouldn't say their names if they were alive, but they're all dead now, anyhow. And uh, Peanuts Pamsko, Jerry Tomzek, they're all gone. It's all a matter of public record. Sure. So anybody could talk about it. Joey's got a memory like Frank. You can just rattle off his name, and unbelievable. 
I grew up here and there's where uh, I think it was Jerry Tomczak was over here with a rifle in case anything happened over there. Uh, Peanuts was a pretty serious kind of a desperation thief. He did the kind of scores you read about in the paper all the time. He was a, a, a garbage garbage burglar? No, he'd, he'd steal. Peanuts, his whole family, they'd steal anything. Pops, Peanuts. Pops used to break guys in. Taught them how to rob trunks. Steal the spare tires if they had clothes in there. They used to be salesmen that would have clothes in there. They'd rob them. I'll take you by the house in Franklin Park. Now, this is where we were at. By the church, Divine Savior. This was the cemetery. And the house was in Franklin Park where they dropped the money off. Is that where we're going next? Yeah, we'll go to Franklin Park next. Okay, let's go to Franklin Park. our house the tall house there with the uh, I'll show you with the fence in front of it there where this house here this was the house here right here this one here the, like all stone 3418 yeah. yeah that was our house wow my brother put that fence in and the driveway that's a different driveway but he did the driveway oh, look at that stone Thanks for calling. Uh. What the fuck? Damn it. Hello? This is it here. This is the garage. This is the famous garage. Now, this is where they pulled safes in and yeah. peeled the safes open. Really? How, ma how many did they peel open in this garage? God, I got no idea. Yeah. I got no idea. Unbelievable. But you can't tell, but that it had a dry, nice backyard there, real nice. Then it's got, you can see the enclosed porch and everything going down the stairs. Yeah, it was nice. So you lived here until you guys were how old? Let's see. We lived here until 60, let me see, 70, 1970. Okay. But we moved here in like 60, 1960, I think, or 61. And uh, then my brother went away in 68. So I think it was September of 68 he went away so then when he came out my mother bought a two flat in Schiller Park and he was going to move in with us but he decided he wanted to be on his own and have his own apartment so we had the two flat there we lived there for five years and then we all moved to Rosemont my brother always wanted to be on his own have his own apartment then you know Let's see, where do you want to go now? Um, where do you want to take us? Did you see, uh, did he ever talk to you about the Franklin Park bank robbery? Uh, yes, he did. Yes, he did, where they got stuck in between the trains. That's the tracks they got stuck by. Oh my goodness. These the trains side. right here? Yeah. <laughs> and there's a train there right now. Now you, you see know. how where we lived there? Right. Mm -hmm. The bank was, was right up the street here. Boy, you that's right. awful close to home. We lived on this block here. Okay, well this is nice. Wait, oh, it was beautiful. This was the most beautiful place in the world. 1833, this was our house right here. Wow, the red okay. one, right? No, no, this one here. Thir oh, okay. 1833, Mark McVickers. This is it? Yeah. So this is, so this is where you lived with Frank? Yeah, we lived here. I was like four when we moved here, probably in 1951, we moved out here. I think in 1959, I'm pretty sure it was 1959. And uh, and you have the park right across the street. This park yeah. over here was? Called Park 9. Okay. My brother didn't hang here. I did. He hung at Reese Park. 
I could take you past Reese Park too. But nothing, this block looks like it has not changed in all these years. Yeah, other than different type of people living right, here, right. but it looks good still. There used to be Zenith Television used to be over there. It was real nice. Oh, look at Another this alley? Map around here. Yeah, the alley. alley. Wow. Boy, I bet you're having some flashbacks now, Joey. Yeah, I loved it. One time I took my grandkids and I brought them here. To show, I think this might be our garage, this brown one here. I'm not sure I'm going to see. No, let me see. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, no. This is it right here, this garage. No, this one here. I think this is it here, yeah. Can't tell. Uh, let me see here. This is it here. Ah, this, this is, is yeah, okay, there's the house, okay. That's our house. Yeah, what a good memory. Yeah, this is our, well, I haven't been here in so long. I make it to the fence in 2.8 seconds. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> Duplex. Now, I'll take you by Reese Park. Okay. I'll take you where the, where the uh, Scavo brothers got shot by them by uh, Billy McCarthy and uh, Jimmy Maraglia. We're gonna nice. go to Russell's. Okay. It's been here forever, ever and ever. They got the best barbecue got it, pork Hopefully sandwiches. It's been here forever, buddy. If you're ever in Elmwood Park and you want a really good barbecue pork sandwich, Russell's is the place. Joey was right, bringing us to Russell's. Although Russell's has an extensive menu, we stuck to the barbecue pork sandwiches. Since we're here in Chicago, we're gonna go down this little street here. Uh -oh. Summerdale? Summerdale. It's called Summerdale. Summerdale. Guess where we're going. Where are we going? John Wayne Gacy's Death House. The Killer Clown. Let's Pogo go. the Killer Clown. Let's go. Sick maniac. 33 young boys. He killed 33. That's and it right there. That's it. There it is, and it's for sale. And there's bullet holes in this. the glass. People are not loving this. Let's get this. Let's get out. Where? Oh yeah, there's bullet holes in the window. Look at that. Want to buy John Wayne Gacy's house? So John Wayne Gacy used to dress like Pogo the Clown. They, they called the police. Well, they didn't call the police for those 33 young boys. Jesus. So he dressed as Pogo the Clown, and then he'd put on handcuffs, trick cuffs, and then he'd make the boys put them on, and, and then they couldn't get out. Literally, under the crawl space of this house. 33. Not three, 33. Can you take a picture, a regular picture? Of course I can. Hold on. We finished off the evening eating a wonderful dinner prepared by Pam, Joe's wife. Thanks again, Pam, for the fantastic meal. It was excellent. I so miss Chicago food.
See you guys in part two. Thanks for watching this video, everyone. Please be sure to visit frankcolata.com for coffee cups and t-shirts. Also, hit the like button, share this video. Oh, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. The subscribe, I found gold. I hope you enjoyed yourself. God bless.